Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolors. Thank you for joining me in this Q&A painting critique video. I haven't thought up a name for this video yet, but hopefully eventually I will do. But today I'm going to answer a few questions I got from Q&A and I will also go over one of the painting I get. And I will go over one painting each video just so that the video is not going to be dragged too long. But if I am talking about your painting specifically in today's video, I will send you an email and let you know specifically. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. First question is from Angel and the question is, are there small paintings that can be used to practice dark, middle and light value? It seems to me this is the part where I struggle the most. Okay, so if you're struggling with the value, I will say start practicing with actually just sketching and sketching with pen, pencil and paper. Don't need to worry about painting as much. And the reason I said that is because if you start doing color before you start practicing value, that's one more trouble for you. And as you can see, I'm not big on color theory and stuff because I believe value is way more important than color. The core fundamental, the perspective, the structure, and able to break complicated shape down into primitive and to light it to get value, to add value into them, that's a lot of things to worry about already. So if you add color to that, that's another layer of things that you need to worry about. So, and when you're able to get the value right with sketching, you will have less problem in painting. Now, what often happen is that people, when people start going to painting and doing all the colors and having fun with the color. They forgot the value relationship of things, which is pretty interesting because the painting that I'm going through today has a lot to do with value and the shape and form of things. So I'm actually very looking forward to share that with you. So the next question is from Lu Ji In, and she actually sent me a painting for me to critique and I will be going over that in a minute. And she asked, how do I improve my watercolor skill? Well, just practice and practice. But also very importantly, when you are not doing painting, looking at other masters painting, looking at other masters work, analyze their work, and also looking at the things around you, really look at them, analyze what you are seeing in a three dimensional way. So if you look at the scenery, if you look at a car, try to think about the perspective and the lighting. Why is the lighting going that way? Why is there specific lighting? How's the lighting of shape, the time of day and things like that. Just trying to train your eye to be able to read three dimensional form in any almost anything that you see. So if you want to paint believably, that's it. So that's what's really important just a lot of practice referencing from other artists work and train your eyes to see better okay the next question is from youtube miss dominic says thank you for your suggestion what i prefer is some more landscape watercolor painting you did one about 10 months ago from which i learned a lot so yes i am going to share a painting video a longer format painting video that's painting a waterfall so stay tuned for that but i try to alternate between two i try to do a portrait and then a scenery and then another portrait and then a scenery so and so on so i'll be sharing you a landscape painting very soon so stay tuned on that Okay, so that's the question I'm answering this time and let's go into the painting critique section and I'm going to do a little paint over and show you how to improve the painting that I get. Okay, let's talk about this painting by Lu Jian. So just for your information, if you are able to speak Mandarin Chinese, if you can type in Mandarin Chinese and that's easier for you, by all means do that because I am from Taiwan so I can understand Mandarin Chinese. Either it is simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese. If it is easier for you to communicate with Mandarin Chinese, by all means please do so. Okay, I can speak and read Mandarin so 
it's good that you utilize that. Okay, so I will be going over this painting by her. I assume it's her. So if you happen to be a guy, I apologize. Um, so it's a really nice painting. You did a really good job. Pretty good job of making clean washes and the color looks really nice and clean. I don't really see much bad edges going on. So you definitely wait till the wash to be dry completely and before you put on another wash. And the ability that you're able to leave out the white is also really nice. What this lack is the read of the form. So looks really nice, nice and clean, but it looks a little bit flat. So I did a paint over. This is after my paint over. This is before, this is after. Now I paint over with Photoshop, but this is not going to be a Photoshop demo. So I am not going to show you how I did it, but I'm going to go through what I did and why do I do that? So first of all, this flipper here, I faded out quite a bit. So even though in the photo it is really dark with a lot of patterns and stuff, I fade it out just because I want to separate this and the rest of the body. So this fin is like this arm, this fin is behind everything else. So I want to give it a little bit more sense of depth. So I just fade off his so I just fade out this arm. So basically what I do is I just paint over some lighter value, but it's a little bit too late now because it's watercolor. You can just simply paint over it. But next time if you paint something like this, you can pre-wet the surface and just drop in some lighter blue color and things like that, whatever it is, and let it have like a very nice soft edge and very light value so that will push it way back now the another thing i do is that i start to put in some shadow some shade that's suggesting form so if you look at if you look at the photo reference and you look at your painting now you do have a little bit sense of lighting but we can push it a lot more so what i did right here is so what I do is I treat the turtle shell as a sphere. Let's say if we have a sphere like this and we have light coming from sort of top down like that, we will have our highlight and we will have our shadow. So So we have our highlight here and we have our light and transition into darkness, which is core shadow. And we have a little bit of bounce light from the bottom. So if we treat this whole turtle shell, the body as a sphere, it shares the same characteristic, right? Here's we got the highlight here and we have the core shadow here. And then if we deform this sphere into the shape of this shell, this is exactly what you're getting. So it's basically the fundamental knowledge of the lighting. So that's why I do that. And for the other arm, it's pretty much the same thing. I treat this arm like some sort of a cylinder. If we do, if you look at the fin top down, it's probably something like this. It has some thickness to it. So that's the top view, that's sort of like a side view. So if you try to draw it dimensionally, I'm kind of just guessing here right now. You have that and it has some thickness like so. Okay, so if you kind of build this in like a wireframe, this is what it looks like. So we can kind of treat it as a cylinder, the lighting of a cylinder, similar to the sphere, we have our highlight and then we have our core shadow and reflective area, okay? So what I basically do is I added some shadow here and have some light here. So if we're trying to do like a wireframe of this arm, it will be something like this, sort of rounded off box 
like so. Okay, it'll wrap. Things will wrap around like this. Because of that, the patterns on the flipper should following the form, like so. So what I did here is I roughly kind of tweak the white lines that you leave and try to follow this a little bit. Now, you can still kind of converge and things like that, but if you try to follow the contour a little bit more, it will start to look a little bit more dimensional. So from this, this almost looks kind of like a flat pattern into something that actually suggests form. And I add some more highlights on top, like so. And the last step is I modified this a little bit. So because of the shell, it's not perfectly round. I mean, even though the basic primitive is a sphere, it's not going to be perfectly round. So if again, if I try to kind of wrap it around, it's going to be something more like this. Okay. So it has a little bit of thickness here, a little bit of bumpiness here, and some more bumpiness here, and so on. Okay. So some bump here, some bump here, and a little bump here, and a bigger bump here. Okay. So what I did is, you can kind of see it here. Like you see the shadow here and then this side it catches a little bit more light here and that is because the form is turning so when the form turns here it receives some light and the same thing here it receives some light here so what i basically do is i add some more light here so that suggests the form sort of turning within this bigger form and I just add a little tiny bit of shadow on his head. So yeah, just put it side by side. You can kind of see the difference. Now we do lose some of the beautiful detail that you try to do here. Yeah, when you make it black and white, you can start to tell this reads a lot better, right? Versus this it's beautiful, but it looks like a pattern. Now, if that's what you are going for, that's totally fine. I'm not saying that this is wrong. This is right. Okay. That's not what I'm saying, but you send me the work and I'll give you my take, whether you think that's going to be something that you want to go for. That's totally up to you. I'm just giving you my take on things. So in terms of readability of a form, what I did works better. Now, if you would do that in watercolor, again, the you do it in the first wash and then you wait till it's dry and you start to paint that basic value here, paint that dark here. Now, what I will suggest you to do is to re-wet the surface so you can put some dark soft edge here. And then you can, while it is still wet, you can add some of these details, like add some of this pattern of some of this detail while it is still wet that will give you some very nice beautiful soft shape inside the shadow area and that will make it really really nice and also when you are starting to paint uh, the arm area leave out a highlight and paint some dark here and then leave the white to kind of have it follow the form a little bit more thank you for sharing with us your beautiful painting and i wish you all the best i hope that this is helpful for you okay that's it for today for today's q a and painting critique so if you have any question that you want to ask me leave the comment down below or if you have any painting that you want me to critique on that you think would be helpful for me to go over it with you Email me at eric at coffeewatercolor.com. So thank you and I will see you guys next time.